sound. We, we didn't pay the bill. Ha 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 ha. Can I ha, check ha. Ike or Air King all right? Can, in the back. You can drive a sound man crazy that way. Oh, it's, oh well, we, ju we jumped our introduction. Yes, <laughs> Margaret is going to speak. Christina. Yeah. Christina <laughs> Margaret. <laughs> you, were, you were close. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to The Strand. I'm Christina and I'm so excited to welcome Stuart Hampel and Dick Cabot here tonight to promote Hampel's dread and superficiality, Woody Allen as comic strip. Woody Allen's classic neurosis, humorous life philosophy, and complex relationships are embodied in the classic comic strip Inside Woody Allen, syndicated daily by King Features from 1976 to 1984, and illustrated by Stuart Hample. Dread and Superficiality, Woody, Woody Allen as Comic Strip, is a compilation of 220 of the best of the comics comics, all rep reproduced from the original art, along with sketches, photographs, and development work. Stuart Hample, chronic self-doubter, writer, cartoonist, and multimedia failure, has written, edited, and illustrated more than two dozen books, including the international bestseller, Children's Letters to God. The host of The Dick Cavett Show, which aired on ABC from 1968 to 1975, and on public television from 1977 to 1982, Dick Cavett has appeared on Broadway in Otherwise Engaged, Into the Woods, and as narrator in the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and has made guest appearances in movies and on TV shows including Forrest Gump and The Simpsons. Following their presentation, Stu and Dick would be happy to take your questions. We'll be walking around with this microphone, so please wait for that before you speak. They'll then sign co he Stu will then sign copies of his book for you, which you can purchase downstairs on your way out of the store. Please join me in welcoming Stuart Hample and Dick Cavett to the Strand. Actually... Uh, I'm Dick Cavett. Yeah, uh, it's the <laughs> magic of the camera. <laughs> what does that leave you, pal? <laughs> By the way, if anyone has a copy of Cavett, Harkett, Brace, Jovanovich, 1974, I'll be happy to sign that, too. <laughs> I feel sorry. There's a short lady from New Jersey back there who can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> Dick actually should not have written that autobiography, Cavett. He shouldn't have written that because you're not supposed to write things you don't know about. I'll wait. Mr. Hample will explain that now. <laughs> no, actually, uh, when that book came out, I was 37, I think, or approximately. I think that's right. And on the book tour, they kept saying, uh, isn't it kind of presumptuous uh, at the young age of 37 to think your life story? But uh, my friend Porterfield, who wrote with me on it, said... Uh, that Graham Greene had said that anyone by the age of 18 has the material of at least three novels. And, and so All bad. Takes care of that. <laughs> well, but novels. <laughs> um, anyone here from New Jersey? Yeah, put your shoes on and get the hell out of here. <laughs> ja ja Jackie Leonard, right? Are you old enough to remember Jack? Fat Jack Leonard. Well, Fred Allen him. said I never could figure why people came all the way from New Jersey over to New York, go to the top of the Empire State Building to pay money to look back at New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the book at hand. Oh, because I the publicist to, is yeah. sitting there and she will hurt us. Yeah. It's Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. This is the night that we're supposed to be here, isn't it? <laughs> this isn't bourbon. <laughs> um, it's a very good book. It's worth your uh, money. It's worth your attention and your effort to put into it. And Thanks, Mom. If you have a good friend who, who will explain the humor in it to you, <laughs> <laughs> you're with it. It's really quite an amazing thing. I, I, my favorite thing in the book, and I hadn't realized because I started it the way I do most books these days, is open it somewhere in the middle. Uh, even novels, no, maybe not novels, but a long book. I can't start page one anymore. I have to start page 200, finish it, and then go back. But uh, open this book anywhere. In, in one of my openings of Stu's book, Anywhere, um, I noticed it included uh, Woody's thoughts about what the column should be. Not the column, the, but the strip. Uh, well, I call it a column. Well, don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the strip, sorry. I write a c 
column for the Times online. Well, why you don't know. you strip for the people? <laughs> <laughs> My God, if you're not going to do this right, just get out. How many would rather see just me, hands? <laughs> Oh, that's, you're too you're too humble. No, uh, it's it, Hample, I think. You're too humble. modest, Hample. <laughs> Hample's humble. Okay, why are we here? Uh, but that, both... that's a very interesting thing because you get a look into Woody's quite serious mind. <clears throat> if you'd never guessed he had a serious mind, he certainly always does. I, I always uh, kind of laugh when people say, uh, boy, it must be fun hanging out with Woody with him cracking jokes all the time. No. Well, Stuart can <laughs> attest to the fact that Woody... Has Woody ever cracked a joke in your presence? Yes, he uh, does, but he doesn't do the, or the bada bum, or uh -huh. he's never on. For example, yeah. For example, when we were doing the strip before it came out, I had to be six weeks ahead, so I went every Saturday to his uh, pretentious apartment on Fifth Avenue to show him the material, and I would take with me the publicity that was coming up about the strip. So one week I took a newspaper from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and there on the front page was a photo of Woody and one of me and a, a copy of the comic strip. I said, look, I was hyping it to him. I said, look at this, isn't this great? We're on the front page of a big newspaper. He said, I don't read Portuguese. I said, even if you don't read Portuguese, just look at that page. He looked at it, he said, I don't see Juif any place. <laughs> oh, for those of you who don't know, that's French for Jew. Yeah. Uh, uh, he said, I don't see Juif. I said, stop, stop making fun of it. This is very important. You're very popular in, in a foreign country. He said, why am I always popular in countries where they torture people? <laughs> that's, a damn, that's both a joke and an insight. I it, like it that. It is indeed, but he didn't... The thing was just there. For example, there is no Woody Allen room at the Friars Club. Think about that. Yeah, he's yeah. a serious man. He's a he's a very disciplined man, and he's not fun. To, we're fun, but he's not fun. <laughs> it is not wise for you or people in the business, assuming most of you here aren't in the business, to go up to Woody and joke to get on his good <laughs> side. And see, I've seen people I have introduced to Woody who begged to be introduced to him, and they'll open with something semi-humorous, and it. You can see him turn off. Uh, he has, he will say, uh, among the funniest <clears throat> things I've ever heard in my life, this side of Groucho Marx, uh, occasionally, but it's never, he's never on. I guess that's the point we're making. Um, sometimes he's startling. Once we were walking on Fifth Avenue years ago, and there were some portraits of Hollywood people of olden days, and there was one of Hedda Hopper, an actress, columnist, powerful columnist, life and career ruiner, and enthusiastic uh, supporter of Joseph McCarthy. And we just sort of looked at her picture for a moment, and Woody said, they should drown her in liquid shit. <laughs> I'm sorry he said the word liquid, you made it. <laughs> <laughs> but when you think about it, He's also, he's also said much funnier things. <laughs> well, uh, Dick Cabot had a wonderful joke when he was a stand-up comedian. I was hanging around, and he had a joke that said, I had dinner last night in a German-Chinese restaurant. An hour later, I was hungry for power. <laughs> yeah, that joke was stolen by a number of people. Um, <clears throat> right now, I stole and, it. Uh, but, well, Woody came down to my, see my act at the Village Gate. I, I, I started out following, I sort of followed him by a year or so. We had the same manager in the same ghastly little clubs and some of the good ones in the village. And uh, I, I tried that joke out. I had written it that day. And uh, this is called Woody, Making Woody Laugh. Afterwards, he mentioned the joke and said, Great joke, Cabot. <laughs> That's Woody's most boisterous laugh. <laughs> when I <laughs> when yeah. I first went, when I decided that he, I had a job which I loathed. In fact, if I'm ever the president, there'll be the no day week. <laughs> but anyway, I had a job, and I thought, God, if I could do a comic strip with Woody, whom I knew, uh, it would be great. So in my head, I had an imaginary talk with him. I said, "Hi, Woody. It's Stu Hampel." He said, who? Uh, I said, I have an idea to do a comic strip with you. He said, no, I don't want to do it. I, I, I have enough money. I'm famous. I